What do the Beatles, Steve Jobs, Walt Disney, and Oprah Winfrey all share in common? There's probably no band in the history of music with more hit records than the Beatles, yet they were rejected by all record labels in the start. Steve Jobs was fired from his own company before they welcomed his return. Walt Disney was told by the Kansas City Star he did not have enough imagination for illustrations. Walt Disney. Oprah Winfrey was fired from her job and was told by her boss, you are not made for television work. Later on, she hosted her own television show and she famously yelled, you get a car and you get a car and you get a car. We often hear about these celebrity success stories, but we don't hear about their failures as much. No, we don't like to talk about failure. And maybe because we don't like to talk about failure, we fear it so much. Fearing to fail, we make it a taboo. The cause is probably due to another fear that we have, the fear to be vulnerable. We don't like to talk about our vulnerabilities, about our fears, about our failures, and probably because we don't like to talk about them, we make them much, much bigger. Together with my friend Nicholas, we have a mental health platform here in Belgium. And we're proud to tell you, up till now, we have a very popular podcast, we've written a bestseller book, and we've reached more than 7 million people. The goal of the platform is to talk about all those things that we as a society consider to be a taboo. On a recent poll on our Instagram, 96% of more than 6 thousand people said they frequently suffer from fear of failure. 96 percent. Those numbers are high and yet we still like to keep up our appearances and yet we still like to pretend like everything is okay and yet we are not thinking of talking about this. I am proud to stand here today before you, but let me tell you, there was a time in my life where standing before a beautiful crowd like this seemed like a concept of my imagination. It was simply impossible. I had a lot of fear. I had a lot of anxiety. It had a tremendous impact on my life. I started developing all kinds of different problems. I started developing digestive problems sleeping problems, all kinds of physical problems. It had a tremendous impact on my life. I even feel it a bit right now, that's why <laughs> I'm waiting on my text, because I reimagine how I felt at that time in my life. But you know, Thinking back about that time, I also thinking back about how my doctor made so much money from me, so that's at least a look on the bright side, right? <laughs> After years of working hard on myself and learning so much through our platform, I feel like I can confidently say I almost overcame my fear of failure. In a weird way, today, I almost kind of admit sometimes I like to fail, so okay, what happened, right? I developed three principles that totally changed my life. And if you don't mind, I'll share them with you. So the first principle, you are not your thoughts. You are the person listening to your thoughts. Can I ask you, have you ever been in a situation where your fear of failure made a totally wrong prediction? Because I know I have. Like that one time, you thought you were going to fail that exam, but you passed it. Like that one time, you applied for a job, and you thought, I'm not going to get this job, but you got the job. Or that one time, you were really into this girl or boy. 
and you thought, she doesn't even remember my name. And not only does it turn out she does remember your name, she also kind of likes you. So yes, yes, our thoughts are lying to us. And when we look back in history, there's nothing that makes us question this belief. But when we look into the future, we tend to hold on to these feelings of anxiety. So how can we break the cycle? How can we break the pattern? I have a small exercise for you that will help you see the difference between you and your thoughts. The next time you are thinking, I am a failure, say to yourself, I'm having thoughts about failing. The next time you are thinking, I'm going to fail again, say to yourself, I'm having thoughts about failing again. These thoughts are just thoughts. These thoughts cannot predict the future. So this small little exercise will help you see this difference between who you are and what you are thinking. Because remember, your thoughts cannot predict reality. It is your actions that create reality. You are not your thoughts. You are not your failures. Second principle. If we could redefine failing as growing, we would be less fearful. So my friend has this story about his backpack. And it's a story about when we travel through life, we gather all our experiences, our past and our emotions into our backpack. But because backpacks get heavy, the story kind of has a negative feeling to it. What a shame. I genuinely wish we could change this. So I have another exercise. Imagine trying to run a marathon race. Imagine the marathon race as an obstacle on your way, like visualize it. Now, visualize yourself going on your very first practice run for the marathon race and catching your breath before you even get to that first mile. Imagine yourself going on a practice run for your marathon race and strapping your shoes on another cold and rainy day. Visualize yourself actually running the marathon race, but falling behind in the race, not even ending it, and feeling that shame that so many people would feel in this situation. Now the opposite. Imagine yourself running the marathon race, everything is actually going pretty well. You end up first in the race and you break the world record, because why not? It is possible. You can decide to either deal with the obstacle or you can decide to do nothing. But we must find the courage to deal with the obstacle. We must embrace the outcome of dealing with the obstacle as if we had chosen it ourselves. Because only one of two things will be true. You will have beaten the obstacle or you will have learned a lesson that will help you beat the obstacle the next time. You will have beaten the marathon or you will have learned the lesson that will help you beat the marathon the next time. So think about our backpack again. Let's try to reframe our perspective. Our perspective is not only to feel how heavy this backpack on our shoulders is, but it's also to think about our backpack is now enriched with solutions for problems that are yet to come. So think about soldiers during wartime. Think about their heavy backpack. So one perspective would say is that these backpacks are now weighing these soldiers down. But another perspective would say is that these soldiers are now carrying solutions for problems that are yet to come. So the next time in your life you see an obstacle, you will think to yourself, I have been here before, I have seen this before, and I know I have tools in my backpack that will help me unpack this situation. A tool, by the way, you might not have had if it was not thanks to failure. Principle three. Do not say, but what if I fail? But say, what if I succeed? Fear has killed more dreams than failures ever will. 
Can I tell you a secret? Back when we started our podcasts, I had never, ever in my entire life heard another podcast before. No? Really? True. I guess I just kind of freewheeled it. And luckily I did so because I feel like I would have compared myself to other people. I feel like I would have adjusted our podcast to how other podcasts were doing it. And even worse, I feel like I would have created a copy instead of something original. Like my dear grandmother always says, you are the best in being you, so why should you try to be someone else? I still think about this every day, because she's right. So these were my three principles. I'll give you a quick reminder. Number one, you are not your thoughts. You are the person listening to your thoughts. Number two, if we could redefine failing as growing, we would be less fearful. Number three, don't say, what if I fail, but say, what if I succeed? After developing these three principles, there's one thing I concluded. Learning to fail is redefining success. Failure is okay. We just need to learn it's okay to fail. We just need to learn failure is an essential part of growing. If our podcasts helped even one listener feel better about themselves or seek help for their mental health, it was all worth it. But not even that was important for us to call our podcast a success. Our podcast was a success because we decided it was a success. Our podcast was a success because we knew we had done everything in our power and in our control to make it an enjoyable podcast. So even before you send your idea, your business, your service, your product, anything into the world, decide for yourself what success is. In this way, Nobody will ever be able to take away your happiness or your success. Think about the Beatles again. Think about how they probably defined their own music as a success right from the start. Because this helped them with the courage to keep on pushing their music to different record labels, although they were rejected in the start. Now that I've come to the end, I would just like to finish with this one. It's a small reminder. You can start late. You can start again. You can be unsure. You can feel lost. You can try and fail. You can fail again, but you can still succeed. Thank you.